Good morning. Welcome to Community Church. Welcome to old friends and new visitors alike. We are a congregation seeking to follow Jesus by loving God with our whole selves and our neighbors as ourselves. This is the second Sunday of Advent, Sunday of Peace. Very exciting time of the year to really find time to listen and be in prayer for God's still speaking voice. Let us prepare our hearts and minds with this song of worship. Will you please stand for Come All Ye Faithful. Please join in the call to worship. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has has helped his servant Israel in according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Call your attention that we will have prayer stations following the hallelujah. And they are in the, on the sides, the rear, and the fronts of the sanctuary. There's descriptions at each one. If you want to get an overview, there's a couple of posters by the, fr- by the doors as you come in to see. But just take some time. You don't have to make it to all of them, one or two. Take some time in thoughtful prayer for peace today. Forgiven and forgiving, let us share the sign of Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. My youngest friends, please come up after you finish lighting candles. And we've got candles to light up here also. So today, hey McKenna, do you want to join us, love? Nope. <laughs> Not even a thought. Today we are, you're going to be learning about peace. And there's a book called, What Does Peace Feel Like? What do you think peace might feel like to you? Any ideas? Yes. Quiet. Quiet. Oh, I love that. Yes. (laughs) We're not going to say that out loud. But yeah, mommy. Yeah. What else? Mommy's hugs, we'll say it that way, yeah. Well, what does peace feel like to you? Calm. Calm. Someone? Say it out loud. Beauty. Beauty. Love. Settled. Settled. Happiness. Happiness. Content. Content. We're going to light a candle, and we're taking turns each Sunday. So who hasn't lit it who would like to? Okay. How about Hannah asked last time? So about Hannah and Paige this time, and next time you start with us. Okay, Virginia? Because we're going to light two candles. We have to light an extra candle each week. So we're going to 
light from over here. And then we're going to come over to our Advent candles. And can someone hold, how about you hold a book so that we don't forget to take it downstairs? You want to light this candle, Anna? This is our candle of hope. We light for hope. And this is the candle we light for peace, Paige. And I pray that you all go in hope and peace with your wonderful Sunday school teachers. Let's pray. Holy God, in this season of hope, the season of peace, we wait. We wait for you. We listen for you. We seek to live into your peace, to your hope for this world. We lift up prayers of joys and prayers of heartbreak, prayers of concern for loved ones, for healing, for support, for those who struggle with addiction or depression or loneliness, those who mourn the loss of loved ones during this holiday season, those with little ones who are struggling. We pray for all these people that our hearts may be united with them in love and compassion and empathy. We ask for strength and the courage to be your church today and each day. And we pray today as we celebrate your peace in the world, a prayer from one of your prophets, from one of your saints, St. Francis. Let's join in this variation of the Lord's Prayer together. Holy God, Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is out, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. The scripture reading today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11. A shoot, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness 
the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. We hear this morning two prophecies, one from the prophet Isaiah in Hebrew scripture, this very ambitious vision that they will neither hurt nor kill in all my mountain, in all my land, says God. And also the Magnificat from Mary, from upon hearing God's angel speaking to her that she is to bear the Christ child, she gives this beautiful poetic prophecy of peace and justice that she sings. And peace is one of those really complex ideas, I think. And I was thinking about the first time I think I began to really grapple with what peace is and how peace comes about was when I was in graduate school and I read a biography of Gandhi. And in this biography, there's a story that soon after India was liberated from Great Britain, from the British Empire, war broke out between the Hindus and Muslims. And this is before Pakistan and, and India were separate countries. Gandhi fasted and fasted and fasted and prayed and eventually brought peace back, at least for a time, in that country as both Hindus and Muslims respected and loved him. But in the midst of that civil war and violence before peace ultimately came for a short time, there was a man who came to Gandhi and he told him a story that his young son had been killed by Muslims. And he was so heartbroken and angry, he sought revenge. And so he too went and took the life of a young Muslim child. And this, of course, didn't bring him peace, the peace that he was seeking, the restoration, the wholeness that he was yearning for. It brought him only more brokenness. And so he went to Gandhi and just asked him what he could do, what he could do to find peace in his life. And Gandhi told him, he said, take a child, a Muslim child, who has been orphaned by the Civil War, and raise that child as your own, but raise him in the Islamic faith. Raise him in that child's faith. That's such an impossible concept for most of us to understand of what that would mean to have that kind of empathy and love to do such a thing. It's almost as unimaginable as the prophecies from Mary and Isaiah. But in that story, I think, exists a truth about what peace is. Peace is the result of the work of empathy. And empathy is something that we've been talking about as we've been studying and learning about how to deal with conflict, how to deal with love, how to engage in, in living lives that are full of purpose and daring. Brene Brown tells us that empathy can only be found when we strip off the armor we carry, allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to be hurt. Because when we have all this armor on ourselves, 
we're not going to get hurt, but we're not going to fully love. We're not going to risk. We're not going to feel empathy for others. So it's the work of vulnerability that allows us to have empathy, that allows us the, to do the hard work of bringing peace into our lives. And when we talk about peace, we often think of war, we think of conflict between people who are very different than each other, perhaps uh, political differences or religious or ideological differences, groups who fight. But peace, as we've been talking about and learning about, is just as important in relationship to our spouses and our children and our neighbors as it is to those who are different than us, who have different political beliefs or different religious beliefs. Marshall Rosenberg, who we've been studying and talking about, says that peace is cultivated when we are able to observe one another without making judgments. In a culture and society where we're constantly filtering other people's actions through, is that right or wrong? Is that too much or not enough? We're constantly judging and making judgments about each other rather than observing, rather than having empathy, rather than seeking to see what does this person need? What are they asking for? What are they expressing with their words or actions? And trying to meet their needs. I think this is the work of peace that we must do every day, that we must struggle to do, the hard work. Just saying that I want peace in my life or I want to be peaceful doesn't get us peace. That man who came to Gandhi was perhaps looking for some easy way out. But there was no easy way. There was only this nearly unimaginable path of empathy towards one's enemy that would bring him the type of peace he yearned for. But that would take years and decades of loving a child and raising him in his enemy's religion. So we will continue to struggle with what peace is, what God's peace is, what it means to yearn for and work towards and strive towards peace. Peace in our religious institutions, peace in our congregations, peace in our relationships, peace in our society. I know this has been one of the most pressing issues that many of you have been struggling with in our society, which is so beset by conflict, by division, by anger and name calling and, and, and ways of assuming what people mean and that they're not good. And this is the peace that we need to find, that we need to work towards together. Thanks be to God for God's still speaking voice. Amen. Our ushers, please come forward to receive our offerings as signs and symbols of all we have to offer, especially in a season of giving. Thank you. Um, just a note before I sing, If I Had a Hammer, written by the great theologian Pete Seeger. Um, don't normally do this in church, but I figure this is a song a lot of y'all know. And if it would fortify you this morning and help to uh, help us to internalize some of the things we're receiving today about peace, I encourage you to sing along with me. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land. I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out a warning, I'd hammer out the love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. Indeed, we have a hammer and a bell to ring out and to hammer out freedom in this world.
peace in this world. Please be seated. Our worship is over, but our service has just begun. Go and be the hope. Go and be the peace of Christ in the world. Amen. Um, this last song, Come and Stand Amazed, is actually a very ancient uh, medieval Dutch carol um, for Advent season, and it's been reharmonized um, for modern times. Um. Come and stand amazed, you people. See how God is reconciled. See his plans of love accomplished. See his gift, this newborn child. See the mighty, weak, and tender. See the word who now is mute. See the sovereign without splendor. See the fullness destitute. See how humankind received him. See him wrapped in swaddling bands, who as Lord of all creation rules the wind by his commands. See him lying in a manger without sign of reasoning. Word of God to flesh surrendered, he is wisdom's crown, our King. Amen. Go in peace.